by your organization. Uh, and um, so you uh, parameters estimated. You can estimate parameters using a least square method. Or you can maximum likelihood. These are the two common statistical approaches for doing a fitting, for estimating parameters. Now this is the one that is used in Excel. Is square, but uh, uh, in some cases it can be shown that maximum likelihood. If you have a lot of data, then the statisticians prefer maximum likelihood. But for uh, most of the kind of data that uh, you would come across as a software reliability engineer, it probably will not make a lot of difference. You can pick either of them, and this is the one that is used most common. So you will fit uh, the parameters and figure out how much more testing you need to do. So it uh, works this way. You have uh, some uh, data. So here you have uh, CPU hours, and I'm giving you an example. Eight years, one, two, three, four, twelve, and here you have twenty-seven failures in first hour, sixteen, eleven, ten, some number like this. And if you will make a plot of a CPU time, and this is your failure intensity, remember failure intensity is the number of defects found per unit time. And you will uh, make, uh, so your actual points would be sort of like this. And you will fit a curve like this. And here is your target failure intensity, let us say. So you want to extrapolate. So let us say you have only this much data, then you need to extrapolate and find out when you will reach here. So based on this much data, you fit the curve, make a prediction, and make a prediction of when you will reach the target. So your failure intensity target could be uh, one per hour. So here's the target. And as a question is, how long you need to test. And of course, uh, so it is, uh, I'm uh, putting in uh, some numbers here. So let's assume we have found beta 0 equal to 101.47. And we have found beta 1 equal to 5.22 multiplied by 10 raised to 5. Now if you will do a curve fitting, depending on how you do it, you can find these numbers are going to come out to be different. It is statistical. So depending on what you do, you will get slightly different numbers. But that should not bother you too much. And then the stopping time would be given by time for lambda equal to one per hour 
is going to be uh, you need to solve your uh, equation and would uh, give you about 56 or 73 seconds which is about uh, 15.69 hours Now notice that the equation of this plot is lambda is equal to beta 0, beta 1, t is to minus beta 1, t. And I think Excel will allow you to fit the model. And uh, so you will get an estimate for this. And you will get an estimate for uh, this. And then that will allow you to figure out beta 1 and beta 0. Any questions or comments? Now you have to allow uh, uh, color fitting is actually a very uh, powerful technique. It is used in many disciplines, certainly in engineering and, and sciences like computer science, but in other fields also. So, so you, you have to play with Excel, uh, allow yourself some time. Uh, you have, you may have to look things up, uh, how to do it. But once you have figured it out, it is not too hard. Any questions or comments? Now there is a way you can linearize, let's say you only want to do linear regression, you can uh, linearize the expression, but I guess it is uh, not needed, but uh, uh, you can take a log of, uh, so you can plot a log, you can make a plot of log of lambda and that is going to give you a linear expression which is going to be log of beta 0 and beta 1 minus log of beta 1 and uh, I'm sorry so if you take a log of uh, both sides so the other side you will get log of beta 0 beta 1 minus beta 1 t so that would be a linear expression with respect to t and you can apply a linear regression so, so that, that is another way of uh, doing it Um, any questions or comments? Okay. Now, uh, how accurate are the results? Uh, now, we have uh, uh, tried and we experimented with uh, the exponential model. And uh, we found that estimated value, now remember the models are approximations. Models are not really in reality. So a model will never fit perfectly. What we have found, based on uh, some of the data that we analyzed, was that uh, for the explanation model, beta 0 tends to be lower than final value estimated beta 1 tends to be higher
Thus, if we look at the expression, so that uh, shows that if you're applying an exponential model, then your uh, uh, estimate for how long you need to test is going to be a sort of optimistic. Mm -hmm. Thus, the true value of the testing time needed Now there are some problems uh, with curve uh, uh, fitting. One of them I have already uh, mentioned that sometimes you will have spikes. So you will have some random fluctuations in your data. And one uh, common approach to handle that them would be to do some smoothing. For example, uh, using grouped data is uh, basically a kind of uh, smoothing. There are other aspects of smoothing. Other uh, techniques of smoothing that you can use and uh, you may have seen uh, a use of smoothing in, uh, for example, it's very common in uh, the stock market plots. So if you look at the plot for a, a stock, uh, you will uh, see uh, simple and exponential, uh, uh, what are they called? Moving average. Simple or exponential, uh, Moving average. The term is moving average. So in, in the, the stock market data, they use exponential and simple moving average, which is a kind of uh, smoothing, because you don't want to be distracted by short-term fluctuations in data. So by using moving averages, you kind of look at a longer-term picture. Another problem with uh, applying these methods is if the software that you're testing is evolving, that can cause a problem. And one uh, approach could be that uh, if you know that a certain software, something has been added to it, then after the addition, you only consider the period after the addition has been done. So that would be more representative for the software. It, the software as you have it now, um, but that is a problem that uh, people have not yet examined in uh, detail yet. So evolving, examining, uh, developing methods for software reliability engineering for evolving software, that is, I think, a largely an uh, open uh, problem. So people apply their reliability growth models even when the software is evolving, and uh, but the answers may not be very accurate. So that is uh, something that uh, uh, I think people need to do some research. And I, I was mentioning, oh, here's the name. Software Reliability Assurance Handbook by Lakey and Neufelder. So I, I met uh, Neufelder uh, yesterday uh, at ISRI. Lakey, I, I think I, I have not met him also occasionally. But both of them were, they had a contract with, I think, Air Force. So they uh, wrote this handbook for Air Force, and hence it is available to us free. And it is actually a good book. So in this course, we uh, don't, we spend only a part of the time doing software reliability. But if you were talking more about software reliability, you would probably use that book uh, 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 more than what we are uh, uh, doing now. Okay, so there was a reading assignment, module size distribution and defect density. And I think uh, there may be, is there a homework question based on that? Or maybe there's a quiz question based on that. I don't think there is. Uh, so I thought there was a quiz question based on module size distribution and defect density. Oh yeah, well, there, might, there might have been. 